Let's talk about uh, instinctual variants. Sort of like when you learn about sensing an intuition, everybody understands sensing after intuition. It's just the way it is. Sensing's, sensing is too basic. Its description is too obvious. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't click um, until you've got more typology knowledge and then you understand that what intuition is and you you know once you start to understand the functions more and see how they interact and how they they play out in people then you can come back to sensing you go, oh that's what the fuck that is but straight out the gate you don't get it it's too basic you have no way of of, of juxtaposing it against other things the same thing is the way with instinctual variants um but they really are very basic and it's they're they're I mean, you can you can almost remove this concept entirely from the numbers, and I think that's easiest because ultimately it's not. Ultimately, it's not an enneagram specific um, difference so much as it is really just a biological survival one. There are, because because we're social animals, we live in a pack or a herd or a tribe or whatever, there are three basic survival strategies available to us. There are sexual, social, and self-preserving. Um, social, well... Let's start at self-preserving. Self-preserving is, and they're all exactly what they sound like. Self-preserving is me. I, I'm taking care of me. I have my resources. I have my stash of food. I got my shelter. I got some money. Um, I got a rainy day fund. Self-preserving people tend to have inventories. Um, they've got savings they they're modest i mean just think of the mindset of somebody who's a self-preserver preserving self-preservation person their main survival strategy in life is to make sure that they have the resources that they need so think about your grandma who writes you a two dollar check it gives you a two dollar bill every Christmas. It has half a million dollars in CDs in the bank, or think about um, whoever your cousin who's got in his basement. He's got racks of food and water filtration shit and ammo. You know everything he'd need for the end of civilization. Um, self-preservation. So it's really, I, I hate pointing out specific exa examples because people latch onto those and people overuse them. What you need to understand is the mindset and the context. This person's survival strategy is I need to secure for myself the resources I will need. That's it. So it doesn't apply to me. I used the example a minute ago, a minute ago of, of somebody who's got food and ammo and all water filtration shit, um, all, the, all the prepper stuff. I have all that shit. I'm still SP last. I'm super SP last. Uh, well, not super SP last, but I am SP last. Um, and you have, to, you have to understand all the instincts and then my approach to life. I have food that 
I sort of started buying what four months ago. And the good shit, I mean, the Pop Tarts, the Cup of Noodles, those things are mostly gone, really. <laughs> I got into most of that. Um, I've got big bags of rice and beans that I'm never going to want to eat. Um, the the pallet, the the cases of water bottles, I've drank about half of those. You know, so my food stash isn't doing great. My water filtration stash is like a hundred bucks worth of little kits and stuff. I got I've got some tanks of of propane. Um. I'm a felon, so I'm not allowed to have guns. So, of course, you know. So, of course, I follow even the most arbitrary of laws. But it's just, it's not, it's not anything. It's an afterthought to me or a hobby. Um, I like, I kind of like prepper shit. I kind of like buying walkie talkies. Now, um, let's move up. So self-preservation, and that's that's all about me. Um, sexual. And sexual is about sex. Um, I know a lot of a lot of churches and Christian groups and stuff have tried to sort of retrofit. Enneagram to make it not so that sexual instinct is not about sex. It is about sex. Um, I don't, I don't care how prudish your denomination is. It's about sex. Sex is arguably the most important thing to biology as a whole. If you believe in God, you have to believe that God made sex. God's cool with sex. You should be too. Um, but the sexual instinct is very much about sex, getting sex, um, finding a mate. Although I guess let me let me ref let me back off that. Cause because again, these are very primitive sort of sort of modes. So um with a sexual instinct, you'll see a lot more intensity since, since we're in a modern society, but we're dealing with primitive instincts, the sexual instinct, you're going to see a lot more intensity. These are the most intense of the, of the instinctual variants. And I know what you're thinking, Taylor, you're so fucking chill. How could you be a sexual instinct? Um, I'm also old. And, um, I've been through some shit and, and you just, you get mellower. <laughs> um, you see more sort of peacocking and that is what it sounds like. Peacock peacocking as a, as a behavior. Um, whereas self preservations are the least peacocky. Sexuals are the most peacocky. Um, and, that also that also translates into behavior. Um, one of the things, and I don't know if y'all know who Cat Passionate is. She's got a Discord server, Transcendence, and she did some videos with me about a year ago. Um, a handful of them in the Enneagram playlist, um, or you can just scroll down to about a year ago. But she's she knows her Enneagram, and she really helped me solidify the last few pieces of my Enneagram which is um, eight wing seven, um, eight wing seven, three wing four, six wing, six wing seven, sexual social. And one thing that I was doing that really made uh, the sexual instinct jump out at her is these sort of, of escalating one-upsmanship things that I get into. Somebody does this, and I do that, and that, and that. So if you see two people kind of going back and forth, 
escalating um, whatever it is, that's that was a big indicator for her as to my type. Um, and it's, it's a sort of showmanship or flashiness. Um, uh, straight comfort with sexuality and sexual topics um, was was another big indicator that she used because I'm comfortable talking about it. I don't I don't embarrass easily. Um, I don't shy away from the topics at all. I'll go right into it. And um, something you'll notice with people who are sexual last is if you make a a um, an obscene statement or a graphic statement or gesture, if it's sexual, it makes them uncomfortable. They kind of lock up. They don't know what to do with it. So um, the instinct itself, again, is based around sex as a survival mechanism. Um, but the way that it manifests, you've got peacocking, you got one upping, intensity, showmanship, um, obscenity, obscenity, um, flirting, sexual, I mean, just sexual behavior, flirting, um, I do that. And then self-preservation, I'm sorry. And then social, this survival mechanism is getting the group behind you. Um, and this, the way I think about this really is it looks a lot like the basic ass Isabel Myers Briggs definitions of Effie. Concerns with the group as a whole. Um, getting everybody on a page. They're sort of sort of bigger. Uh, for instance, one the way that they describe the social eight which is the counter type eight because social is um, co runs contrary to eight. Um, but the social eight is described as what was it like? They're aggressive. It's like aggression for the sake of society or something, you know, it's, it's, it's got a real way of, un of hitting that hard edge. They're aggressive and mean for the sake of the downtrodden and the weak, you know, something like that. But um, anyways, you get it. But really, you got to you got to just stop looking for specifics and tells and give away like, oh, he's he stocks pile stuff. He's self-preserving or, oh, he talks a lot about the group. He's social. Don't do that. Um understand understand the drivers the instincts the basic primitive um instinctual variants that are driving the observable behavior because my stockpiling and a self pres doms the self pres person's stockpiling may look the same you know from the street but they're not at all. And if anything, if anything, my stockpiling has been an expression of, of my sexual instinctual variant. Um, I used to have a ton of guns before my legal woes. I had a ton of guns. Great, fantastic gun collection. That started out, I bought my second and third gun as sort of preps sort of prepping because I understand economics and I can look at the dollar and I just didn't trust it. So I bought them with prepping in mind. However, my gun collection 
was absolutely much more a demonstration in my sexual instinct than my self-preservation because what I ended up with was a hundred thousand dollar gun collection that had very little survival value and a whole lot of flash value and peacocking one upsmanship. I had some very rare guns. I had some very expensive guns. I had I built a but most a lot of them myself. And I mean I had all sorts of custom shit. I had guns with with gold plated lower parts. I had found a dude in California. I'd send the pieces out to him in California. He'd cut them in 10 karat gold, send them back to me. I'd put them on the guns I was building. I mean at that point you're way, way past self-preservation. You're peacocking. This motherfucker. Thank you. Yeah, I was I was basically a loot crate, of course. <laughs> I did get looted. I got looted by the sheriff. Fuck you, Max Barrett. Fuck you, Ryan Laney. Fuck you, Scott Chesney. Scott Chesney. Scott fucking Chesney. 